Hey there, it's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy, and today I have a really cute card planned for you. Now, I'm going to warn you right now, and I'll probably say it a couple times as people pop on, but this might be a long video because um, I'm going to show you a ton of products today. But as promised, we're going to use that Give It A Whirl die set. And so if you've noticed that the Give It A Whirl die set, you won't find it very like all over the catalog. In fact, I think they should call this the um, catalog and idea book because you can make, I mean, look at all the ideas in here. Look how cute. We should make that card. That's cute. Oh, those little, anyway, all of these great ideas. But anyway, this the die set that we're going to use is right here. And this, in fact, is where I first discovered it because I thought that is the cutest card ever, right? I want to make that card. And then I'm like, well, what is this? And I went in to look and research a little bit and come to find out that's where it has the Give It A Whirl dies. Now, the Give It A Whirl dies are not bundled with any stamp set in the catalog. And at the time, I was very into this um, turtle set. But the, I'm thinking I'm getting ahead of myself. So the Stellar Birthday, I bought that one. I think I'm going to make this card, right? When it all came in, I thought I have to color all this. So I didn't use that one. I used the turtle and I made my first card look like this. Now it has some issues. I use dimensionals under my layer. And so it's kind of hard to get a hold of this whirl thing. Now stop here. If you're looking for this butterfly, it's right here in the hippo happiness. He looks like this. He's three stamps. You stamp, stamp, and then stamp his little face. Although, look, I forgot his face. Shh, don't tell anybody. But look how cute this card is, but not very user-friendly because this is hard to get a hold of to turn. I mean, it's it works, but we're going to fix that today. I'll show you how to fix that. Well, the first thing, the way I tried to fix it was instead of using dimensionals there, I used um, the foam strip which we're going to use today. I'll show you how. And then it's a lot easier to turn. And with this card, I was loving this, which I still am sharing the sunshine. And look how I made it with the sunshine. And I'll kind of show you how to do that today, too. We're not going to make this card. We're going to make the other one. But I'll show you how to get that sunshine face just where you want it into that little sunshine outcut. But look how cute that card is. Okay, so let's... um keep going so we're going to use this turtle and friends which i do love this stamp set let me get the catalog out of the way or the idea book that's what i'm going to start calling it because i do look through my catalog all the time to get ideas and you've probably seen me make a few cards out of the catalog so let's look at the finished card that we're going to make we're going to make one that looks like this look it's a lot easier to spin that little um I call this a Viewmaster card, so to me that's just like a Viewmaster up there, but is that not cute? And then like I promised, I said I'll show you how to put, if you want to do something like this. Now this little Hello Sunshine is out of the, oh and guess what I don't have with me, I thought I had that one too. But that's out of the Celebration $100 stamp set, I can't remember what it's called, Special Moments? I don't know, anyway, if you want to know, there'll be a supply list on my blog that has all the, well, no, it won't be on there. I'll add that on there so you can see what stamp set that is. But look how cute that is. Okay, let's go on. I'm gonna show you how to do all that stuff. Let's start by looking at the dies and some of the stuff that we're gonna need. The die set is huge, and I've done some die cutting already just so we don't have to make the video all that long. I've already cut out a few of these um, circles. Now, this is the mechan mechanism that's gonna move your um, inside around, right? And when I was making this card, the, I didn't like that when you're looking at it, you can see the lines inside here. Now, I don't know why this line right here doesn't bother me when you cut this piece out, but this line, I think because this isn't the focal point, this is the focal point, and you can see those lines. And then this morning I thought, well, why don't I just take that circle that I cut out? And so you can see the lines here, which normally would help you stamp in these three sections, but I'm not even going to do that. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to just stamp here and here and you won't see those. Um, well, here, so you can see it with my die cut machine. So I cut it again with a new plate. Ha, there we go. And now I don't have any of those little marks and I can stamp wherever I want on here. 
I did cut one in thick whisper white and nope, thick basic white. Sorry about that. I can't get the whisper out of my brain. And in um, just regular basic white cardstock. But I think I'm going to use the thick. I wanted to see if you could see the uh, marks less on the white, the, the basic white, the regular white, and you still can still the marks. So I'm going to use the back of the thick. I hope that makes sense, but I don't want all those little marks on my wheel. I don't know if that makes sense either, but let's keep going. And then also in this die set, you get all of these little pieces. I've already die cut the three little clouds we're going to need. And this is the little arrow. So I've cut those two. See like the arrow right here. And they have the little curved arrow right here. Are those not adorable? And then they have all these different, um, like circle up here or you can do a heart and cut the heart out like this they have a little border for the circle which i think is great the little stars some circles you can just dye or like imprint the um, arrows rather than cutting them out and then they have the stitched heart oh and the stitched stars that i think are adorable and i've used those on some of my cards before too so there you go lots of ideas i also suggest that you do something like this and you cut out a template then you can take this in your idea book or catalog and you can decide look what fits in there what do you want in there that was a terrible sample let me find a different one here we go this would be a good one you could put the little um, vegetables in there you could put the salt and pepper shaker and you can decide you know what sentiments fit in there what's cooking look how cute that would be but anyway, I suggest you cut one of these with all four of those shapes and then just have that on hand. I just keep it in the front of my die set like that. All right, I'll keep, keep going here. So let's put this away. But it's a huge die set. We need this too. Did I mention that this is going to cut out the front of our card that leaves that space so we can get to our um, mechanism back there. Mechanism, circle. Viewmaster part, I don't know, whatever that is. Okay, let's see here. I told you I'm gonna show you tons of products. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this circle, and I, whoop, and I forgot we need one more. We need this piece right here, because we're gonna use this today. And I guess I should show you this one when we do the other card. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna see about how high. Now, I'm, I'm gonna just stamp in a circle. I'm not gonna worry about those three areas here but I want to stamp in the inside the circle. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to line up the hole that the die cut in my circle here and the hole in this part or in this piece, like such. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just want a, a guideline. And then with the pencil, I'm going to really, really lightly just draw the top of my circle so I can see about where I want to stamp. And I'm going to do the same over here and I'm only going to worry about it on two sides because once I get those stamped I'll be able to tell where to stamp on the other so hopefully you can barely see my pencil marks and then I'm going to before I go on I'm going to find my eraser so I remember to erase those okay and then I'm going to take and set that well no we're going to stamp on that let's go ahead and stamp so I'm going to bring in this happy birthday and this you are turtle to turtly loved and I'm gonna bring in a block. Now, I want these to kind of curve on there, so I'm gonna set them on my block. I'm gonna start with happy birthday, and kind of take it, and with our clear mount stamps, or no, these aren't clear mount stamps, these are photopolymer. Come on, Kathy, must be early in the morning for me. And see how I kind of curved it on there? But I'm gonna hold it over here and see, I have it backwards, you see that? Because I was gonna stamp, I wanna curve it this way. There we go. Thank goodness we checked, huh? Let me curve him just a little bit. There, now he's pretty curved. And now, look, there we go. Now he's not upside down. But now when I stamp him, I'm going to curve this down a little bit more. It's going gonna, it's gonna to follow that arch right there. And I think that looks pretty good. It might not be perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and just go for it. So I got some Memento Black ink here. And I'm going to stamp right here with my curved stamp right under that pencil mark well not right under but mm, a little bit under i'm gonna just do it about right there hold that down and let that ink sink in really good there we go and now look i have that curved happy birthday there so let's i'm going to turn it completely around 
And on the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing now with that You Are Turtly Loved. Let's see if I can get it the right way instead of backwards this time the first time. He's curved way too much. Let's make it a softer curve. There we go. And see how that looks there. We have to curve him a little bit more. But I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and ink him up. Let's practice once on a piece of paper here because he's doesn't look... Oh, yeah, he's fine. He didn't look like he had enough ink on him. Okay, so let's put him exactly the opposite of the happy birthday and just stamp that right there. So far, so good, right? Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So let's say, for instance, we were going to try to make this card. So on this card, you'd do it a little bit different. I'm going to turn it over, mine over, just so I don't see the pencil marks and stuff. On this one, you would use those three areas where you can see how it's embossed. So you can see there's three areas here on our cardstock. I would take this circle die, like this, and that pencil again, and I would draw three circles like this in each one of those areas. And whoop, I'm gonna get my finger in the way, but it wouldn't matter. And then I would take that stamp set, this circle here, right? And I would stamp them in each of those little areas. And that way we know exactly where it's gonna fall when we put it on our card like this. So that's how I would stamp this one because this one's a little bit different than this one here because we're using, well, in this case, because I use that sunshine as a border around that hole rather than just the open space. Okay, so let's go back to this one. Just wanted to show you how I did that and we'll finish more of that. I'll show you more of that idea later. Let's stamp those little hearts on there. So these cute little hearts right here, I'm gonna stamp in some real red ink. And I'm going to just take, you know what, this is, let me get this in here. There we go. And I'm going to stamp those, get it straight, just right here under my words. I think that should look pretty good. And then we're going to take that little turtle that's in the stamp set and fill in these two little areas here. So we want the one that is facing... That's the wrong one. We want the little turtle that is facing this way. I do. Because I'm going to have it go happy birthday and it'll, it'll roll this way. That way my little turtle's facing the right way. So I'm going to ink him up first in some evening evergreen. And let me get his little shell. His shell's another little stamp in there. And we'll stamp that second in there. What a random video. You guys are going to be exhausted by the time I'm done because I'm just firing away. We got a little turtle stamp there, though. And we got the little turtle stamp there. And then with this little shell, I'm going to try to get it into his little body. Ooh, I did pretty good. Let's do that again. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to let that ink dry just a little bit. And then I'm going to erase those pencil marks. Okay, that gave that ink just a minute. Because now I'm going to bring in my Soft Succulent um, Stampin' Blend. And I'm going to lightly color my little turtle. Now, I think that the Stampin' Blend would smear that ink. Maybe it won't, but I'm going to just be careful and I'm going to especially, like, not get his eye because I want his eye to remain white. But I'm going to just get the little parts here. Oh, look, it's not, it's not smearing eye light. But I'm going to just color in my little turtle body. Just give him some color. I'm not even being perfect. I just want some color. I don't want him to be white. Color 
color in. Do, do, do. I am not a patient color. I think most of you know that about me, and coloring is not my thing. But there, now we have just a little bit of color on our turtles. It's not perfect, but now this piece is all done. Let's set that aside, and let's start making the other pieces of our card. And let's start with that little turtle on the front here. Let's have him for reference. I can't get my pieces are in the pile here, and I can't get my pieces apart. There we go. So this is a piece of soft, soft succulent. I'm going to get out those two pieces of the turtle. We have his little body here. And then I do want that. It's time to celebrate, so I'm going to put that there. Now, well, I'm going to do it two steps. I'm going to first stamp him in that evening evergreen. Like this. And where's my silicone or my stamp and pierce mat? But I think he looks okay. And then that scrap of paper, I'm going to stamp him again. And I'm going to stamp him. All I want this time is his shell. So I'm not going to worry about his feet are hanging off my paper. I just want that shell right there. Because then with that time to celebrate stamp, I'm going to stamp that down here in the center of his shell. Look how cute that is. Okay, let's put all this away and bring in the coordinating punch. I'm going to clean up a little bit. I worked myself into this little corner again. But with the punch, I'm going to punch out just that shell. Line it up as best I can. Punch that out. And then I'm going to punch out the whole turtle over here. There we go. And then while I'm punching, I have a teeny tiny scrap, let's see if I can find it, of basic white and basic black here. And this is going to be his eyeball. So the little black I want, I mean the little hole here on the punch, I want in black. So I'm going to just slip my paper in like this and get that little hole. Let's see if, it, oh, there he is. Where am I going to put that so I don't lose it? I'll put it right there. And then I have all this mess here. Let me get rid of all this. Okay, and then with this bigger old hole over here, I want that in white. So I'm going to just punch that little hole in white. And right now, before I lose all my pieces, I'm going to bring in my silicone mat here. <laughs> I'm going to throw everything around, and I'm going to use my take a pick tool, my silicone mat, my two little eyeballs here. I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on my silicone mat here. I think it's called a silicone, silicone, silicone craft sheet. I need to go back to bed. But with my full turtle here, I'm going to take that little eyeball, pick it up with the sticky end of my take a pick tool, just rub a little bit of glue on there and stick that down there. There we go. And then that little black dot, I'm going to do the same thing and put it down here inside the and look how cute that little eyeball is on my turtle okay for this piece here i'm going to go ahead and finish fussy cutting out that shell there we go and then with some dimensionals I'm going to put that shell right on top of my turtle. And I think that gives you a really cute little kind of 3D turtle that's not just flat on the paper, but just a little bit extra work. And I'm making sure I line up like the lines on his leg and on his neck to get that back so it ends up looking like that. Look how cute that is. Okay, so now we have that piece. I have already... I guess I'll call it cheated, and used my brother scan and cut, and I stamped that little bird in red, and then I colored his little nose in some bumblebee ink there, and then I didn't get done, is I want to put a little black from my Stampin' Right marker 
on his eye. So he has a little black eye and it just stands out. It doesn't look like a little red eye in there. So there's the little bird. And I did the same thing with the hat. But I used um, Bumblebee, or nope, that's Crush Curry. I beg your pardon, Crush Curry and Pumpkin Pie to color in his hat right there. So now we have all those pieces. Like I told you before, I punched out, or I used the die machine and, put, and die cut. There we go, I'm struggling. Those little clouds, let me see if I can get those out of here. I like these because they're really cute. They have the stitched edges around the little clouds. And these, when I die cut my um, circle here, I just ran them through all at the same time. So these are thick whisper or thick basic white, which isn't necessary, but if you're running it through, you might as well do what's convenient and that was easiest. So they're all thick. Maybe that's why it was hard to get out of there. And if I could find that little, I'm, I'm gonna lose my arrow die here. There it is. Let's get those out and put those in the pile too. If I can pick it up. <laughs> I can't pick it up. It's stuck on, there we go. Hmm. So we have this little arrow here. I'll put it on here so you can see it. We have that little arrow there and this little arrow here. Now we're gonna use that little arrow because that may, points the way I wanna move the card but I'll throw that in my little dish and use it another time. So I'm gonna put this in our pile. I have a little pile here of all the stuff we're gonna use. <clears throat> One more thing that we need to stamp real quick. I've used this um, beautiful tree die. No, this isn't the beautiful tree dies. This is the other tree. You know I use the beautiful trees all the time, but this is the inspiring canopy dies. And I just took this piece here and a scrap of granny apple green and cut that in advance so we have that here oh and look that tore my paper so let's try to use this one take the washi tape off slow and almost steady there we go it tore a little bit but i think i can place my turtle in fact this one too i could place my turtle over the top so i'm not going to worry about that i'm still going to use it but i do like this die for the grass line although if you just took your paper snips and trimmed around it that would work just fine too or trimmed across and made your own grass, that would work just as good too. But I'm gonna use the smaller one. Okay, so I think we have, oh no, I wanna stamp on here. So let me take that Granny Apple Green ink and that little tuft of grass here. And let's just randomly stamp on here. Now, honestly, I don't know this much, like I said, it's just a scrap. So I'm not sure how big that is, but we can cut it down to size after we cut out the front part of our card. But now I have all the pieces that I wanted on there, or I want that we're gonna put on the front of our card. There we go. And I'm gonna bring in, I have a scrap here of balmy blue. Let me clean up a little bit and give me some work room here. I have so much stuff out here, it's not even funny. And now when I put it all away, I'm not gonna be able to find anything when it's time to use it, but that's okay. So here's my piece of balmy blue. I'm gonna take and cut out that front panel like this. And I probably should have done that in advance, but we're gonna have to die cut that one a couple times. So I have my platform here, number one, number two, my number three clear cutting pad, and then lay my paper on there and my die. And then I have the second clear cutting pad to lay on top. Bring in my die cut and emboss machine here. I'm gonna cut that out. Keep that machine handy because we're gonna use it again. And then I have a piece like this. 
So I love the fact that it stitches all the way around it. But I've heard that other people, it's, this line right here has bothered, bothered them. So what you could do, for example, let me see the card. On this card, you notice I don't have the stitching around the edge because I just laid this piece on the same size, which I think is about five and a fourth by three and three fourths. But I just laid it on the cardstock. I drew this circle here because you're going to need it. And I took that circle die. Where did it go? This one here. And I laid it here and cut that out. So see, you could do it so you don't have that line down the center. But I like the stitching around the sides, so I think it's worth it just to run this piece through the die cut machine. Just a little bit more information about the. I've been studying the Give It A World dies and learning from several other demonstrators. And I don't even know who to give credit because I watch so many videos. And I'm going to use a little bit of everybody's ideas. So there you go. So then with a piece of washi tape because I don't want it to move. Now we need to put this little peekaboo window up there. So I'm going to take this piece here. I'm going to line up those holes right there. And I'm going to move it just a little bit so it's not straight. I just want it a little bit angled to the left here. And then, like I said, with some washi tape. And this doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be, you just got to see the hole through there. Let me lay it like this. Try to put, I'm going to put most of my tape on the inside of the hole here. That way, if it does stick to my paper again, it'll mess up this piece and not this. I hope that made sense. Lay this back on here. Same sandwich, bring in that machine again. And we're gonna cut that out. Let me see if I still, if the holes still line up. So let me stop for just a second and show you how I did this one. So on this one, I used my circle dies here. I had a little one like this. I took part of that sunshine stamp set, which I don't remember the name of right now, it's over there. I took it like this, it cut it all out, and then I took the smallest circle. I believe this is the smallest circle of my layering circles, and I popped that out. So then I had a piece that looked like this. Now the good thing about this is that this circle is just a little bit smaller than this circle here. So then when I laid this circle on my cardstock like this, right, and cut that one out, this frame fits on there just right. Now, like I said, it's a little bit smaller. That way though, when you miss, if you missed on your stamping, it would cover up your mistakes because this circle is a little bit smaller and I would just put it on my cardstock just like that. So that's how I did that. I hope that makes sense. That's how I, you know, I tried to show you where we would stamp and stuff before on the back of this one, but that's how you would line those up with that. Yikes. Like I said, I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's, let's carry on. So now we have this piece. One more circle that we need, and I've already die cut it for us. And this is just gonna give us a little stability on our card as I took my layering dies again, layering circle dies, and I cut out a big circle just like this. Now this wouldn't have to be a circle. It wouldn't have to be a plain circle. You could even just cut a square out of there. But we need something to give this some stability. So we're gonna take some dimensionals. Oh, nope, we need a circle in there. We need a hole in there first. So I'm gonna take this about where I want it and take my take a pick tool and just punch a hole or poke a hole through that piece there. And then I'm gonna reinforce that so I can fit that bread through there. Okay, and then on this one, we're gonna take and put some dimensionals and I'm gonna just put four right around. Like that, pop those dimensionals off, or the covers off, put the covers off. And then with the brads, now we have these little round and square brads, that's what they're called. I'm gonna find a little one. We're not gonna see it anyway, because I'm gonna cover it up later. But I, here's a white one, that one will work. I'm gonna take, oh, 
this spread. Here we go. I had to think about it. No, I'll do it this way first. I think this way is easier. So right now I'm not going to finish the bread, but I'm going to take this and put it through here so it's in the right spot and put that back on to my turtle. So see, now I can still put the bread through the holes, but yet it has this little piece that's going to make it pop up a little more and it's going to make it easier to spin like that. I hope that made sense. But now we have this set up. We have all this ready. Let's go ahead and attach this piece to our card. So now again, I line up those holes and I'm gonna just put my brad through there, turn that over and open it up. Not get it too tight, cause I don't want it to hold my centerpiece, but looky there, now it curves and all those little parts are showing through my window. Nice, huh? Now I think I got my turtles a little bit high, but like I said on this card, same thing, I got them a little too high. I can cover that, that brad and that little bare spot there with my clouds and it's gonna work out just right. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish decorating this piece. So here's my little scrap of um, green. I'm gonna just take this and it turns out to be the right um, height. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Otherwise I could put it on and then just trim it down here. But for this one, I'm gonna just take it like that and then I'll just trim those sides. I'm gonna just lay him down right there. And where's my silicone mat that had a little bit of glue on it? Put everything away now, I can't find nothing. Here we go, because I have tape on both sides. I don't want it to stick to my work surface, I want it to stick to my silicone mat. So I'll put it like that. And then I'm just take and trim this down right here. Now, I think that's the easiest way to do it. If you still wanna see the stitching, you can go like this. I just measured a little bit smaller so that my stitching still shows on the sides. But on this one, it's gonna just be the same size. I think that's faster and easier. Okay, let's put our little clouds on there. First thing I wanna do is cover up this little Brad. So I'm gonna take him and put him on dimensionals. And I'm gonna use, I think I want this little one in there though. I'm gonna use this knob, I guess you call it, of the cloud to kind of cover up this bare spot and that brad. So I'm going to put dimensionals on this side over here. And then just go ahead and put that. And I'm doing all of this first before I put it onto my card base. So like I said, if I have stuff hanging off and stuff, I can trim it as needed before I go. This one, I think I'm gonna just lay him flat with a little bit of tape runner here or snail. No, it's not snail anymore. Now it's called Stampin' Seal. There we go. I think I'll put him right there. And we'll see when I put my card base if I need to trim that off or if it could just hang off a little bit. And this one, I think I'm gonna put this one just flat on there too. Maybe set it up there. Look how cute that is. Love those little clouds. Okay, now we need our little turtle here, so I'm gonna put him on just flat since his shell is already um, popped up. I'm gonna just put him flat on there like this, just standing, hold on, I got some tape in between. There we go. Just standing on the grass. A mini dimensional on the back of my bird here. Put that right there. And then a couple mini dimensionals on the back of my hat because I think one fits right where that pom-pom is yep and then I'll put another one down here so that holds it nice and firm I wonder I have to see I might have to take that pom-pom dimensional off because my cloud might be in the way but let's see what happens Yep, look, my cloud's in the way. Hang on, I lied. We're gonna take that pom-pom off, or the dimensional off. Yay, I thought I was gonna tear my hat, but I did not. Take that dimension, and let's put a glue dot on there instead. Go 
throw a little glue dot so that way he looks like that. And look how cute. It's a little crooked. Let's maybe fix that a little bit. Nope, that don't work either. <laughs> Thank goodness we can fix everything when we're making cards, huh? Or I'll show you what not to do, and then you won't have as much trouble as I do. There we go. But there's the front of our card. So let's bring in the card base now. I have a piece here of um, Misty Moonlight. It's eight and a half by five and a half, just your normal card base scored at four and a fourth. We'll fold that in half and let's see, I want to check first before I put it down that our clouds aren't going to be hanging off the edge. Nope, I think that looks good with our clouds. Maybe, let's see, because this one, I cut the clouds, which way do we like it better? Let's let the clouds hang off the edge on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and take now, remember the first one I did with dimensionals and it was too flat, it was hard to get that to turn. So I'm going to bring in these um, foam strips and I'm going to just cover the outline here of my card, making sure that I don't get in the way of this circle moving here. We want that to be able to move. So a little bit of foam strip right here on the edges. Where's the sticky part? There it is. I'm going to take that little piece that's left over and just set it there. Make it a little bit more sturdy. Because I have this little piece left, I'm going to just take that one stuck on there. I'll give it a little bit right there. I'm going to enforce those, make sure they're stuck down really well. And then when I put this on my card, I'm not going to center it. It's not quite the perfect center there. I'm going to put it a little bit to the left, and that way I have room here for my little arrow. So let's take all those backs off. Maybe I shouldn't have put that. I'm not going to worry about his back. He's going to just be there for, he won't be adhered, but he'll be there for support. He was being too much of a pain in the drain to try to get the back off. Okay, one more. And then we're going to set it, like I said, a little bit so it's, Centered it so it's like got the same border on these two sides, but not necessarily over here. And now that we put that support under here, look how easy that is to turn compared to my first one. And now we need the little arrow to point up so they know to to point to turn it this way. So where I probably lost my little arrow here. Nope, here he is right here. So I'm gonna bring in that silicone mat again. A little bit of liquid glue. And just like I did before with the little eyeballs, I'm gonna hold on to my arrow with my take a pick tool and just touch it in that glue and set it right here. And let that dry. Look how cute. There it is. So let me show you, well, I want to show you, I'm a little bit of ashamed that none of my cards have the inside done yet because the front has everything that you want it to say, right? There's no, what do you say on the inside? So I went through a few stamps. It's like I said, I'm going to show you a bunch of product and I found this stamp set and this is, I think is what I'm going to use. It says hoping your birthday is filled with all the best things, which works because you've already said happy birthday on the front. But on the one, but on this one, this here that has the sunshine, I like this sentiment that says, "May your day be filled with sunshine." I thought that's perfect to go 
with the little sunshine here. So I'll do some of that. You could also use the Hey Chicken that just says, let's celebrate you. There's the Pampered Chef that says, hope your day's a real treat. And then, oh, and that's it. So let's go ahead and do this one. I'm gonna take just a piece of basic white. I'm gonna just stamp that turtle. Where did he go? Down here in the bottom. Ooh, I'll put him over here since he's facing that way. And then in this case, I want to use that turtle shell rather than And I'll be honest with you, stamp set, I usually have better luck if I stamp the shell first and then the turtle, so I probably should have done that. But that's a trick. If you're having trouble getting your shell where you want it inside the turtle, stamp the shell first. I think it's easier to see when you line it up. But we'll just see <laughs> how it works this time. I might be sorry. Nope, I did okay. Yay. And then last on this, oh, I still want to do the inside. I'm going to go ahead and take that little tiny bow. In fact, let me use this one, this block. And I'm going to put that little tiny bow with that red ink and make my turtle a little girl. I'm going to put a little bow in her hair right here. There, look, now she's a little girl bow. And then I'll bring in that memento. One more block. Let's see if I can fit my sentiment on here. It does fit on there. I'm going to practice once since it's red rubber and the first time it's stamped. Yep, there we go. Okay, and then just put that down here right in the center. And then add that to the inside of a cute, adorable little card. I think this is gonna be my granddaughter's birthday card. So there we go, just like that. So there they are, there's all my cards. Now I just need to get all those inside done. That's all of them that I've made. So with the give it a whirl thing, I just got a stamp set in the mail yesterday with my order. And it is this, um, let me see if I can find it now. Here it is. The Catching Butterflies. Look how cute that stamp set would be with this give it a whirl dies. You could have her on the front of your card and have those little butterflies flying into her net. So that's going to be my next go at it. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. If you need any of the supplies that I used, and I'll even include, now, um, now I can't remember which I wanted to add to my supply list for you. Oh, well. Okay, but my supply list is on my blog, Be Created with Kathy, with um, the paper measurements, and like I said, the supply list. If you ever have any question, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for putting up with me and watching my Give It a World Die Set demonstration. Have a great week, and I'll see you back here on Monday. Bye-bye.